This is the 13th lecture for MA1012. In this lecture, we'll think about matrices. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers. We've already seen some of them. Um, so it has rows and columns. Rows and columns. Um, and we'll say it's P by Q to mean it has P rows and Q columns. Um, so, uh, so that's how we measure the size of a matrix, right? Number of rows times the number of columns. And it's always written as PXQ. We don't, for example, actually carry it out as a multiplication. A 3 by 2 matrix isn't a 6 matrix. 3 by 2 isn't 6 here. 3 by 2 is different. It means that it has 3 rows and 2 columns. If we have to specify a matrix symbolically, we'll use uh, usually a capital letter for its name. And uh, following the, the lecture notes and very frequent use, we'll write its, its entries using a small letter, but with indices A11, A12, A13, so on and so forth, as many as there are, A1 by uh, Q columns, and dot dot dot, well, this will be A21 dot 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 uh, a p1 dot 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 dot, dot a p q so its entries are written out something like this um, with various dot dot dots to indicate the row the various rows and the various columns so it's uh, a sub row uh, column and usually we have fewer than 10 entries. So when I write A13, that doesn't mean A13. It, we could write it as 1, 3. And if we had to have a matrix with enormously many entries, we could write A57, 19 to indicate that it's row 57, column 19. But we never will do that. All of our matrices are very small, so it's not. there's no danger if it's only one digit for each. Um, of the row and the column. We don't really need the little comma. Certain, uh, certain arithmetic operations of matrices are very, very elementary. If we want to add two matrices, we add them by adding their entries. 1, minus 1, 7, 2, 14, 9, plus 5, uh, 2, 6, 8, 21, 4, is just add the entries, the 1 and the 5, the minus 1, and the 2, the 7, and the 6, because they sit in the same slot in the matrix. Right? The 7 is in the first row, third column. 6 is in the first row, third column. So you add the 7 to the 6, because they're in the same position in the matrix. 2 plus 8, 2 here, 8 here, 14 plus 21. Because the 14 is in the, uh, the second row, second column, second row, second column, so 21, so we add those together, 9 plus 4. Subtraction is exactly the same, the same story. Um, you just put, if I had the minus sign here, I'd put minus signs in wherever I'd done the additions, just put minuses instead. Um, another obvious observation is that it doesn't make sense then to add matrices that are of different sizes. So if I have 1, 4, 7, 2, 3, 8, that's a perfectly well-defined matrix, but 2 minus 1, 8, 5. I can't add that to that. It won't ever happen that we'll try to add things that are the wrong sizes, but we don't have, have a definition for what it means to add a matrix of one size to a matrix of a different size because we don't know what to do with these entries. There's no corresponding entries over here to add to, and so we just won't, won't ever try to add matrices of different sizes. The zero matrix um, is the matrix, it's usually called the zero matrix, is the matrix of whatever size which has only zero entries, zero, 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 is a zero matrix. Um, and it's often just denoted, uh, denoted just with a symbol zero when that's reasonably clear, because usually when we're manipulating matrices, the sizes of the matrices we need to manipulate are, are, are fairly clear. So when, if we just use the symbol zero, it means whatever size of zero matrix we need to work with at the current time. We multiply matrices by numbers in an, also an easy way. If I want to multiply matrix by 4, 1, minus 7, 9, 2 matrix times number, you just multiply all the entries by that number. 4 times 1, 4 times minus 7, 
4 times 9, 4 times 2. So the obvious thing. So you multiply a number times a matrix, or a matrix times a number, by multiplying all the entries by the number. It's, it's a very easy thing to do. Um, so th so far, all the arithmetic is very straightforward, and the laws of arithmetic are also very straightforward. Um, they ha have the obvious rules. Um, for example, things like, um, obviously, if you have any matrices A and B, then A plus B must be B plus A because we calculate them out by adding, uh, just like for vectors, we calculate them out by adding entries. And when you add entries in either order, you get the same result. Um, and similarly, A minus B is B mi as, uh, minus A plus B. Uh, well, it's B plus A, sorry. Um, things like that. Uh, the obvious arithmetic laws hold. Uh, they're hardly worth mentioning since they're, they're very straightforward. Uh, 2 times a plus b is 2 times a plus 2 times b. The obvious reason that you doubled all the entries of the sum, it's just the same as doubling all the entries and then summing. Um, so because it works for numbers, it works for matrices. Um, so I, I won't waste too much time on those. Uh, they're more or less obvious results. Um, there are, however, some uh, algebraic manipulations of matrices that are not obvious, and that's what we really want to focus on. So addition and subtraction and scaling by numbers are really straightforward. They, they do what you expect. Um, there are other operations with matrices that we have to think about. Um, one other one that's very, very elementary is the transpose operation. A transpose of a matrix. There are, unfortunately, many different notations for this. So that's the danger, um, that matrices have been around for a very, very long time. And in that time, many different people have come up with their own notations for these things. So there are many different notations for transpose. Um, we'll follow the, the notes here. The lecture notes use AT to mean the transpose of A. And what is the transpose? It's a very simple thing to calculate. It just simply means we take the matrix and we swap which are the rows and which are the columns. So we flip it uh, this way uh, to flip which are the rows and the columns. So for example, if I have 1, minus 5, 8, uh, 0, 2, 4, um, I would take that guy and I'd flip it so that the, mat the matrix entries go across this diagonal here. And um, so I'd end up with the first row becomes the first column, 1, minus 5, 8. The first row became the first column. The second row becomes the second column. 0, 2, 4. And you can see that it just got flipped around here. The 1 and the 2 stayed where they were. Things above them went below them. Things below them went above them. Everything flipped. So this is A. Uh, is this guy. And then A transposes that guy. It's the same matrix, but with the rows and columns swapped. And it has some obvious um, properties that if I uh, if I add all the entries together and then swap which of the rows and which of the columns, it's the same as if I swapped rows and columns first and then added the entries together, uh, for example. So some very elementary properties, some obvious properties. Another obvious property um, is that if I swap which of the rows and the columns and then swap again which of the rows and the columns, swap them back again, then of course I get back to where I started from. So some obvious um, properties. And in, um, some matrices have the special property that, that they don't change when you transpose that this matrix, for example, looks exactly the same. If you look down this diagonal, the entries above and below are exactly matching. So A, in this case, is a transpose. And that's what's called a symmetric matrix. Luckily, some of the terminology is absolutely standard, like the word symmetric matrix. No one else uses, no one uses anything else. But this transpose symbol, uh, lots of other notations are used in the literature, unfortunately. There just isn't a standard. And obviously, there's one of the biggest problems with the subject is that it's been pursued for such a long time by so many different people. If you look at the literature in economics, uh, they use a lot of matrices there. There's a lot of matrices in engineering. There's a lot of matrices in uh, chemistry and physics and in mathematics. And there's been a long history of people uh, generating different, notation for, different notations for things, which is a bit frustrating. We can see um, that, for example, if we scale and then transpose, so we multiply a matrix by a number, we take a number C and multiply it by a matrix, uh, and then transpose. What have we done? We multiplied all the entries by C, then we swap which the rows and the columns, but they're still all multiplied by C. And so that's the same as uh, multiplying 
uh, the transpose. So we multiply and then transpose, or you transpose and then multiply by a constant. So c is just a, c is a number. Okay. For us at the moment, all the numbers are just real numbers. We'll only be working for the moment with with real number matrices. So we may eventually need some complex number matrices, but for the moment, they'll just be real number matrices. Uh, so far, when we encountered matrices, we only encountered them in the form of so-called augmented matrices um, with some entries and then some kind of slash and then some column of entries. Um, that could also be thought of as a matrix. It, the, the, the vertical bar here doesn't really matter too much for us. We could think of that as just a matrix. Um, and uh, so this vertical bar is supposed to separate out what we had as the variables columns from the constants columns, but it doesn't really matter very much. Practically speaking, the vertical bar is sort of irrelevant. It's just to help us remember which, of the, which we were thinking of as constants columns. But in practice, uh, if we just think of that as a matrix, we could drop that little vertical bar there, and, and, and then we'd, be, we'd have already been doing a lot of manipulations on matrices. Um, some particular special cases of matrices, we can think about... Uh, special uh, notation for matrices, we have, um, what if a matrix only has a single column? Okay, so then it's called a column uh, matrix or column uh, vector. Um, this doesn't quite agree with our use of the word vector previously because our vectors had to have three entries. Um, but we can sometimes think of, if we have a three entry vector, like minus one, four, two, if we didn't have that 12 in there, then that we could always think of as being a vector in the usual sense of our vectors as minus one i plus four j plus two k. And that would be fine. So we could think of it that way. And that's in the sense in, in, the sense in which these could be, these we thought of as vectors. But if we allow four entries, then it's a four dimensional vector. And that's a bit strange. We're not gonna do a lot of that. And it certainly doesn't fit in neatly with the geometry that we've been talking about. Uh, we could also allow uh, matrices that have only a single uh, a row, um, and those are known also as row vectors. And they are also thought of as being vectors in some large number of dimensions, one, two, three, four, five numbers. So that's a five-dimensional vector, and it's a five-dimensional row vector. Again, that doesn't fit neatly with our notion that vectors were supposed to be three-dimensional objects and we're supposed to draw pictures of them in three-dimensional space. Now we're talking about allowing any number of dimensions for vectors, uh, but um, we'll worry about that later. For the moment, we just want to remember that that's the terminology. A matrix that only has one column is called a column vector. A matrix, matrix with only one row is called a row vector. And there's always a difficult issue about one-by-one one matrices. If I have the matrix just has the number 12 in it, uh, one by one matrix. Um, we'll sometimes think of that as just a number. Um, is that just a number or not? Um, sometimes we want to think that it's a number. Sometimes we want to actually say that it's a one by one matrix. Uh, another special shape, though these are all the special shapes we can have. Another special shape is a square matrix because those occur most often. Almost all the matrices we want to study from here on in will turn out to be square matrices. So they could be one by one, Two by two, three by three. Remember, it's possible to have somebody like the, like our column here. That guy has one, two, three, four rows and one column, so it's a four by one. This guy has one, two, three, four, five columns, one row, so it's one by five. Um, but we're most often is a square matrices. That is to say, the number of rows and columns is the same. So this is a one by one. Um, but we could also have things like a two by two. Um, or we could have a three by three. For example, that's a three by three. Um, so that's the kind of shape we're most often going to encounter. It's usually going to be square. And those are what are called square matrices because they have the same number of rows as columns. Again, in practice, when we run into matrices, we'll usually have no trouble identifying what what size they are, whether they're this by that, and manipulating them with one another. So this isn't really a very serious, important question, whether they're something or other by something or other. It's always obvious in the applications. When we transpose, of course, if we have a P by Q matrix called A, then obviously its transpose will be Q by P, swapping rows and columns.
in particular square matrices have the possibility of being symmetric because they have the same number of rows as columns clearly any symmetric matrix where that was saying that a transpose had to equal a it must be square because we're going to transpose its rows and columns then the number of rows has to be the number of columns in order that the thing can match match up with itself in the next lecture, we'll talk about how to multiply matrices, but right now we know how to add, subtract, scale by numbers, uh, transpose, um, and uh, we know the elementary properties of those that follow. Um, turns out that multiplying matrices is a lot harder, a lot more complicated than, than any of these operations, and even more spectacularly complicated is the problem of dividing, in some sense, dividing matrices. So we'll get on to that. Uh, next time.